Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this special episode we're going to take a quick look at a few new features in the latest version of Lightroom for mobile on iOS. Uh, so a couple big ones in there but we'll take a look at uh, what's new and show you by starting off with something that users have asked for for quite a while now and that is raw support. In other words, uh, while it's been great that you could, of course, always import images directly from your cameras um, or other other services as JPEGs, um, Lightroom Mobile has had a hands-off approach for uh, importing raw files while you're out in the field. Well, now, starting today, you'll be able to import your native raw files, edit them, work on them in Lightroom, and when they sync, they sync back to the desktop, back to everywhere else, with the adjustments to the actual raw files. So no more having to work on a JPEG, then get home, import the raw file, and do it all over again or copy the adjustments. Now you're actually able to make your non-destructive edits to the raw file while you're on the go. So let's first take a look at the import process, and then we'll dive in and take a look at some of the new features around editing. So let's switch over to the iPad. Now, normally, I would have my iPad directly connected for these videos, but uh, since I only have the one lightning port and I'm going to use my uh, Apple Connection Kit to actually bring in my SD card, I had to uh, shoot kind of over the shoulder here uh, and just point the camera at the uh, iPad itself. But anyway, I've got the iPad Pro going here and uh, I've got my card inserted into the card reader. I'm just going to go ahead and plug that card in in or card reader in via the lightning port and in a second or two it will launch the standard built-in photos app um, you have to do the photos app um, just because <laughs> it's apple so you got to do the photos app and uh, luckily this is an ipad pro and this is the latest uh, version of the card reader or camera connection kit so it is uh, USB 3 supported so it's going to be a little faster going to be a lot faster for the actual imports now all of these are actual raw files I know it's hard to see them but they are raw files and I'm just going to go ahead and tap on one here that I haven't brought in yet and now I'm going to go ahead and just tap import I could select them all I can import as many as I want individually but I'm just going to go ahead and say import and import selected so that'll import that one car or one image. Boom, it's done. It's already asking me, do I want to keep it on the card or delete it? So I'm going to go ahead and keep it on the card. And um, that's it. It's now imported in. So the next thing we'll do is we'll just get out of this uh, and go into Lightroom Mobile and import it. But let me go ahead and direct connect for that so you get a better view of what that process looks like. All right, so now we're back. We've got the uh, image imported into the iPad's uh, native Photos app. I left it left off right where it left off. Now let me go ahead and get out of that, and let's go ahead and launch Lightroom Mobile. So I'm just going to go ahead and launch my Lightroom Mobile app. And of course, Lightroom Mobile, um, I don't have it. You can have it set to auto import, but I don't have it set to auto import. I'm just uh, going to go ahead and import the image manually. But before I do that, a lot of people overlook the fact that you can import directly into a collection. So once I tap onto the collection that I want, then I can go to the very bottom and say, or tap add photos, and that will ask me, do I wanna add Lightroom photos that are already in, or do I wanna add some that are from the camera roll? So I'm just gonna go ahead and tap camera roll, and sure enough, as you can see in the uh, left-hand corner there, upper left-hand corner, there is a brand new raw file. It actually even has the raw label right on it. And there are a couple other raw files that I've already imported as well. Uh, so, um, by the way, just for uh, full disclosure, the raw file of the girl that we're about to import, the young lady here, uh, those are Nikon D700 raw files. But the one from the house or the back of a house there, that's actually a, a Nikon D810 36 megapixel file. So it will work with large files. Uh, but let's go ahead and import this one. And we'll import it right into the collection. There it is. Um, and now that it's here, I can go ahead and work on it. So I can go ahead and tap on the photo. And I am now working with, as you can see in the upper left-hand corner, a .NEF Nikon or Nikon native file. So it will work with all of the raw formats that we currently support for Lightroom, uh, which is, a, again, a phenomenal feat that we can do this. 
All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to go in and um, I'm gonna go ahead and make some adjustments. So the first adjustment I usually make, I look at a photo like this and I say, well, the white balance looks a little off. So let me go to edit. Uh, let me tap on white balance and let me use the selector uh, since she's on a nice neutral background there. And we'll just, as soon as I hover over it, I can already see the improvement, but I'll go ahead and lock that in. Uh, if I'm happy with that adjustment, I can continue working or continue making more adjustments. So that's the big thing is that A, I just imported a raw file, B, I'm working right on that raw file, and that raw file, when I'm done working with it, will sync back up to Lightroom and appear on my desktop. All right, so now that I've done that, the next thing we'll do is uh, take a look at number two, uh, which is another big new thing, and that is we're starting the process of bringing over local adjustments over to Lightroom Mobile. Uh, so that means that if I tap the new local adjustment uh, area, I got the ability to tap and drag on the screen to create a linear or radial adjustment. So I'll just tap to get rid of that uh, help there. And it's, it defaults to a linear um, or great graduated filter. I'm gonna go ahead and choose a radial one. And so once again, I just tap and drag, and now I'm making an adjustment or an area to be adjusted right here on the image. Now, of course, I haven't made any adjustments to it yet. I just pulled out the, uh, the ellipse. And now, for example, I can go to exposure and I can increase the exposure in that center part of the photo. So I'll just bump up the exposure just a little bit. And just like on Lightroom on the desktop or camera raw, it is a live adjustment that I can continue to move around anywhere that I want to illuminate and have that adjustment made. Now, I know what you're thinking. A lot of people think, well, doesn't that radial adjustment have the ability to do what's inside the radial uh, area or outside? And sure enough, in the upper left corner here, I can toggle it to make everything else lighter except what's inside or the opposite. And of course, these are all non-destructive adjustments that carry over or carry back to Lightroom on the desktop, Lightroom on the web, and Lightroom on your other mobile devices. All right, uh, or other devices in general. So with that said, that's number two, local adjustment. So we'll do one more local adjustment. Let's do the linear adjustment. And same thing, I just pulled down in this case, uh, or I could have pulled up actually. Actually, let me go ahead and delete that one. There we go. So we'll just add a new one and we'll pull up. And now what I can do is uh, the opposite. So I can, for example, darken uh, the bottom portion of the photo and have the light fall off the way I would normally do it or in, in actual in the actual camera with uh, different soft boxes that are uh, more deep and focused I can now just do that in post right here in Lightroom Mobile using the uh, linear or graduated filter or the radial filter to illuminate a specific area so I think you're going to love having those local adjustments so you can just apply them to specific parts of your image. And of course, you can have, uh, just like in Lightroom on a desktop, you can have more than one. So I can tap a new one. And now when I drag out, it's dragging out the second radial adjustment that I can again um, you know, pull to any part of the photo that I want and make any adjustment that I want. So if I don't want to do exposure, uh, perhaps I want to do, um, Let's do more saturation in that spot. We'll crank up the saturation quite a bit in that spot. And then of course we can pull that across. So we can make the sweater more saturated in that area. Uh, but very cool to be able to do these things locally uh, now in Lightroom Mobile. And uh, um, we'll wait to see what else is coming in that regard. So with that said, uh, let's go back out and let's take a look at the third thing. It was kind of, it was kind of minor, but still important. And that is the ability to go in, if I go all the way out to the sidebar here, I've got the ability to go in and uh, when I do an import, I can now choose to add my copyright, uh, which is a small thing, but still important as I'm importing these images in, it's just one less thing I have to do when I get back to the desktop. So now my copyright info will be there as well. So my at, or my, I'm sorry, my copyright, Terry White. Another feature that's going to be great to have is the ability to take advantage of keyboard shortcuts. So if you've got a device like an iPad Pro that has a keyboard or any iPad that has a uh, external keyboard, you'll be able to now use those keyboards to work inside of Lightroom. So for example, uh, if I bring up uh, that photo we were just on, 
Uh, as we can see, that photo doesn't really have any flags or stars. And of course, I'm used to doing that on my desktop keyboard by just hitting the P for the pick flag or maybe the four for four stars. So you'll be able to take advantage of keyboard shortcuts where they make sense now in Lightroom for mobile on iOS. So as we can see, not only did it sync over the uh, actual NEF, the actual raw file, but it also brought over, uh, and it's full resolution by the way, it also brought over the pick flag, the star rating, and if I head over to the develop module, um, I can see that I can go all the way back to before I made any adjustments. So again, completely non-destructive. And even if I head over to the uh, local adjustments, the local adjustments are here. I can continue working on them or add different ones or change them or delete them. So uh, the graduated filter is here as well. So it's all here, all coming over from Lightroom Mobile now originating from the raw file out in the field whether you bring it in via wi-fi the camera connection kit or any other method you can get it into your uh into your mobile device you can now work on the full resolution raw file and not have to do double duty working on a jpeg and then finishing up on a raw file when you get back as well as uh, all the latest updates and enhancements to adobe camera raw as of today so five things that are pretty cool Two that are major, raw files, the ability to do local adjustments, have your metadata, keyboard shortcuts, and all the latest enhancements to Camera Raw built right in to Lightroom for mobile on iOS. Go download it, go give it a shot, try it out today, and we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.